Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. I told him it's 2.30 in the morning. Are you, you know, are you people insane? And, um, and I told him I'm calling the cops. And I shut the door. Several North Fargo neighbors are startled by an early morning knock on their front doors. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. It happened in the 700 block of First Street North. We've been contacted by several people in the Oak Grove and Horace Mann neighborhood. They describe a couple, both in their early 20s, a black woman with short hair and a white man with glasses. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood learns more about these late night evangelists. I got a knock at the door at 2.30 in the morning. And they did that two more times. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, which that typically means someone knows you, you know, when you knock that way. But that wasn't the case when Kristen Severson opened her door to see two people she didn't know. And she goes, Do, would you like to know the love of Jesus? I told him it's 2.30 in the morning. Are you, you know, are you people insane? The early morning solicitors weren't a total surprise to Severson. She had a heads up from her next door app. Neighbors described seeing a man and woman who were going door to door late at night sharing the gospel claiming to be with the Church of God. He said to her that if he knew that the world was ending tomorrow, it wouldn't stop him from saving a life. We've received reports from near 45th Street in South Fargo, a couple fitting the same description, entering apartment buildings and knocking on doors. How many other houses did they knock on and why did they pick my house at 2.30 in the morning? Whose other house did they knock on and, and someone answered or didn't answer and we don't know about it. It may not be illegal to do that. Deputy Police Chief Joe Anderson advises people to be cautious of late night knockers. There's a chance they could be checking who's home and who isn't. Uh, but certainly is, it, it's not good timing um, to, to try to spread that message. I think Jesus would actually let people sleep. <laughs> you know, you know, there's a time and place for everything and it's not in the middle of the night. Mike, Andrea, there is a Church of God in Fargo. The senior pastor told me that he doesn't want our community confusing the two churches. He says their approach to the Word of God is very different. He also reached out to the Church of God International. Remember, that's the church supposedly tied to the couple. It's headquartered in Denver. The senior pastor told me he's not sure that the couple is working for the church. However, he would immediately put a stop to any evangelists going door to door, especially at odd hours of the night. All right, thank you so much, Christine. We did get word of a possible sighting of the couple this afternoon in North Fargo. We have a crew looking for them and are hoping to have an update on Valley News Live, 10 at 10. We have some storm damage to show you from last night. That's coming up. Let's first find out about today's heat and the chances for more stormy weather this evening. Hutch, for the time being, is at the Cashwise Barbecue. Hutch? Thanks so much, Mike. Yes, we have a lot of humidity in the air, and that's going to be the fuel for thunderstorms should they initiate. Now, we do have some very strong thunderstorms out in the Minot area, and they are advancing in our general direction. With all the heat and humidity, though, uh, these storms could quickly become severe. And in fact, we have a tornado watch for our northern valley counties uh, until 11 o'clock tonight. The storms are severe over the Minot area as we speak. There's more in Manitoba that will be drifting into portions of Northeast South Dakota is where we have a chance at a best chance at seeing some of this severe weather. So if you're in the Southern Valley, the chances are not nil, but not as good as they are up north. Here is a look at our watch, a thunderstorm watch for Stutzman, Dickey, Lamore, Foster and Eddie counties. We have a tornado watch for the Devil's Lake Basin and of course heat warnings and advisories through the Red River Valley into western Minnesota, not only for tonight, but into the day tomorrow as this heat and humidity will continue. Let's take a look at your planning forecast as we head into the evening tonight. These sticky 90s and 80s will persist and look at the heat indices. Over 100 uh, heat index values now in places like Valley City and Rozo. 90s for the next couple of hours cooling off if you can say that into the 80s we will have a chance at some late night storms hey we're here at the cash wise backyard barbecue we're in dilworth and the winner tonight well john schultz john step on over here sir and tell us where you signed up to win we signed up at the cash wise store in the east 10 mall all right Moorhead. you've had a chance to chew on the steak a little bit as have i what are your thoughts hey, it's really good uh, good. We're glad that you came out here with those steaks. Uh, I think everybody's appreciating it. Very good. And what about uh, where in the store do you sign up? Do you remember? Uh, let me see. We were in between, I think, 
the fish cooler and the uh, oh. and the uh, brat cooler, maybe. Okay, in the meat section. In the that's meat right. Section. That's Perfect. right. You passed your test. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. You get back to enjoying your meal and your company here. And for now, uh, in Dilworth, it's hot. It's steamy. Maybe some storms later, we'll be back with more on your forecast in a few moments. All right. Enjoy yourself, Hutch. Thanks. Cars, roofs, trees, semis, houses. If it was in the path of the storms that came through the Northern Valley early yesterday evening, they were probably damaged, if not altogether destroyed. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker was there today as people came together to clean up their communities. Flooded fields and a flipped semi lead the way into Grafton. We didn't think that we'd be back out again. We're still actually not completely done with all the cleanup from the original storm damage or the first storm. Fresh, new green piles of tree limbs and branches sit alongside the week's old brush. But despite all this new work, those cleaning up here know it could have been worse. We were pretty fortunate not to get into the hail. You know, we did get some winds and some limbs down, a uh, few trees this, uh, that came down in some of our parks around town, uh, but nearly not near the damage that we had two and a half weeks ago. In Crystal, North Dakota, they weren't so lucky. If it could be broken, it probably was. Started out, you know, pea size hail up to uh, baseball size. Um, you know, it was a 15, 20, maybe 25 minute hailstorm. Damage wise, I guess you'd have 100% uh, of the town, every house was hit to some extent. Uh, varies from maybe one window broke in a house to probably up to six or seven that I've heard. One of the hardest hit towns during the storms was the city of Mountain, where I'm told by people working that around 50% of the trees were knocked down. Crews worked throughout the day to clear the top of trees that were no match for the ripping wind. The wind was coming so strongly from the north that I thought the house was going to go. Doris Steinolfsen watched these trees come crashing down in her front yard. I'm not scared of weather, and that's probably not good because I was busy watching. But finding the good is what Doris has done with this situation, and it's what she thinks everyone else should try to do. This house is 100 years old at least, and the trees were that. So, and I'm going to miss the trees very much, but better than having your house ruined. Reporting from the Northern Valley, Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. Other areas in the valley saw some damage too. If you have any pictures of storm damage, we would love to see them. For more information on how you can send them our way, head to valleynewslive.com. A showdown is brewing between the North Dakota Parks and Recreation Department and a township board near Walhalla. Some people say a state-run trail system uh, for ATVs is causing big problems in the scenic Pembina Gorge. There are 22 miles of ATV trails that are interconnected with township roads. Problems are created when rain shuts down the trails and riders travel on personal property and township roads. We have four-wheelers that will cross across our seeded fields. We have, uh, have people, they'll have a run and there'll be seven no warning trespassing signs ripped down on an eighth of a mile road. When I call the state, I've called up to seven times in one day. They won't respond. The township board is threatening to close their roads to ATVs and, in effect, close access to the trails and the people who use them. A special meeting is being held next week. How do you feel about the city of Fargo's approach to tax incentives? At least one commissioner is arguing that the city gives away free tax incentives to companies that don't need them. Mayor Tim Mahoney responded to the more than $600,000 10-year break given to FedEx, calling it vital to attracting business to town. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric breaks down what this means for your taxes as FedEx plans to have flights up and running by this October in Fargo. Mr. Wilson, if you don't get this exemption, will you still move to Fargo? Yes, sir, we will. The city commission vote passed 3-2 to two to give FedEx a decade-long $660,000 tax break. The company is moving from Grand Forks to Hector International, with more than 70 employees and millions of dollars expected to be pumped into the FM economy. But when a company says they don't need it in order to stay here and they were going to come here anyway, and then to still give it to them, that's mind-boggling. I don't think anyone could understand that. Commissioner Tony Garrig, who voted no, says the airport authority gave FedEx no incentive to move. And they've been pursuing the shipping company for decades. My, my property taxes are $300 higher than they should be based on the incentives we're giving here in the city of Fargo. And that's not including tips. Well, there's a little misinformation there. So they had a gentleman from FedEx who was not the financial expert that asked us for the, the tip. 
So what you have is somebody didn't fully understand what the why and the wherefores are. Mayor Mahoney counters that the taxes the employees of FedEx will be paying here will offset more than the worth of the incentive. And we've been working with these people for 20 years to get them to come to Fargo. So the TIF was part of the negotiated issue that they came forth to us before they planned that. The mayor says the FedEx financial people he's talked with said the incentive was an important part of their decision to move here from Grand Forks. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. With the FedEx facility in Fargo, both Commissioner Gehrig and Mahoney, the mayor Mahoney, says it's a fantastic option to further grow the local economy. The Minnesota State Fair is just about a month away. Later on Valley News Live at 6, what new attractions you'll see this year. Here in eastern North Dakota and western Minnesota, the weather isn't too bad now for a backyard barbecue, but storms could be brewing for your evening forecast. I'll have details coming up next.